for the serious gamer. Hey, it's Guns for Hire from Next Gen Tactics. This is our Search and Destroy Hardcore video series, and this is Estate Defense. Keep in mind, this is not one continuous game. It is only meant to show you one or two possible strategies that you can use out of thousands available. All right, the first class set up, and you're going to see a variation of this one with a P90, and I'll just quickly show you it. But it's a uh, mini Uzi with silencer, obviously one-man army, uh, claymore, smoke grenades, cold-blooded, and ninja pro. Now, I start off, always off with an SMG, not only uh, because of the one-man army, but for this particular strategy, you need to move past, and you're going to uh, be, and if any of you know, there's so many stupid noob tubers out there that, flame the car at the top there and if you do not move quickly enough past that car you're going to bite it before you even get across to the other side so it's important that you have an SMG on just keep that in mind the next class that I switched to uh, in one or two of the videos is the assault yo ass class which is the M16 um, holographic sight silencer the M1014 with grip yeah whatever else on it claymore smoke grenades bling pro cold blooded and ninja pro a variation of that first SMG one-man army class that I was talking about is uh, swapping the mini Uzi with the P90. And I don't think I had the silencer at the time or else I would have equipped it on it. But uh, P90 works just as well or any SMG for that matter, whatever you're comfortable with. And a variation of that other primary class that I use. This is the old reliable. It's an M16 with red dot. There's no silencer on it. The M1014 with grip, claymores. Flash Grenades, Scavenger Pro, Cold-Blooded, and Ninja Pro. Yeah. Alright, the, uh, the defense that I'm going to actually show you, I call the uh, Gatekeeper. Because more or less you control two main and major access points to both bomb sites. Now you notice actually whether or not I did my little jump, my little fancy pants jump there uh, past that car. That car is what is dangerous and why I mentioned you need to have an SMG on. If you don't have an SMG, a lot of times other players, and not this game here, thank God, but there's six million grenade or noob tubers, whatever you want to call them, grenade launchers that play hardcore and try and get the quick, easy kills. And if you are one of them watching this, screw you and learn to play the goddamn game and stop being such a boor. Anyway, enough of complaining. They're, uh, they're going to be there. And heck, even after I say that, they're probably going to use it even more and figure out more annoying ways. And I can use the noob tube and blow their ass out of the water as well, but it's not as rewarding. It's not as fun. It's kind of a cheap kill, you know? And hell, some of you may think this is a cheap kill, but this is a defensive. This is a strategy meant to control a major access point, which is the center of the board. And you'll notice a lot of people try and come around that front of that house here so I'm gonna take an opportunity while it's kind of quiet in the uh, game here and you notice I'm always accessing uh, pressing start to see the mini-map I wanna see where my teammates are when they, especially when they die I have to see where they die because I have to know you know more or less where the enemy is and you see the red dot light up there so while you don't have a heads up here when you press start and someone's firing without a silencer, they will light up, and then you'll know where they are. The reason why I do that, and right where I'm kind of looking at now, even though I'm actually looking at the front of that house, I'm still looking in the doorway, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled right across the entire uh, view there. But that corner, that's front of the house there, not right in the doorway, but the corner there that I have, uh, where they, it's closer to their spawn area, not I actually watch that. A lot of people will try and creep around that f side there, and you'll see that in uh, another clip or two, or even both of the, the next clips. But you have to watch that, and this position is perfect for that. Not only are you close enough to get to B, like in this case here, but you're controlling the other <laughs> access points. So we got to kill at the front there, and then this meatball has decided to plant the bomb and a little fancy spin around. But so we're gonna do it again. This time I got the P90. Again, you want uh, an SMG. Hell, even if you have uh, like say marathon and lightweight and bolt pass I mean you can change your class as long as you don't throw a claymore or throw anything down bolt past that area first then quickly change to whatever class it is that you want uh, especially if it's an assault but you want to get past that car really fast and there's someone coming around the front just like I said in the uh, the last match there although they didn't do it the last time uh, a lot of times like 
I don't know. I, I can't give you a percentage. I'll say 75% of the time. Okay, so three out of four times that you play a state, there's going to be someone that comes around the front there. No, did I even nail that guy? I don't think I did. I thought maybe someone was in there. Look at that. And believe me, you don't want to see my accuracy rate. I spray and pray a lot. Um, you know, it works. That's why I usually don't use the M16 in hardcore, because it's not necessary. I use something like the ACR, uh, even the SCAR. If I'm going to do something like that and I want to kill them quickly, I'd use the FAL, because it's technically, uh, without the silencer anyway, it's a one-shot kill, even long distance, although a lot of uh, weapons are. But the FAL long distance uh, will drop opponents easily. Oh, there is. There, but there. this is effective nonetheless. I mean, you just three round bursts. Anyway, I'm always coming back there. You notice I place a Claymore uh, on well, the rear of me near B when I have the, the opportunity. First, I watch this for any rushers coming around that front of the house. If they're not rushing, then I quickly bolt back and I place that Claymore on that uh, car. And the reason why I make it face that car, not only will it get someone around the corner, but even if they sort of back off from that, that Claymore, if placed properly and close enough, and I think one of these videos, possibly even this one, I put it back a little bit too far. But if it's, yeah, I think it's this one. But if they try and come around there, even if they, they you know, trip it and don't actually... Uh, make it, get killed by it, it'll actually blow that truck up and kill them from the secondary explosive damage. So we're going to do it again. Uh, P90, and I believe I used the old reliable, same thing, uh, M16 red dot. Again, much smarter to use um, silencer. It's just I hate the M16 with a silencer. I hate the iron sights on it. So I would opt for the red dot on it any time. Like I said, oh, this is the one. So that was way too far back. You don't want to place it that far back. Place it closer to the, the truck, even if they sort of just catch it on the end there before it kills them. Oh, I think I've got some problems here. Maybe they went inside. I don't know. I think the some of the dudes die here. Anyway, um, you want to place it close enough so that it, it will detonate that truck. That You've got to take advantage of vehicles in this game. If you learn to place claymores, like across wheel wells, um, in COD 4, like, uh, I think it's Crash, amazing, amazing Claymore that you can place at the top of the spawn area when you're uh, doing offense. And it, every time it'll, they can't see it, it trips, blows the crap out of the car if they haven't blown it already, and you get a super easy kill. So anyway, this location, as you see here, I mean, in different sort of games and stuff like that, it's such a critical hold point because it allows you direct, you're looking... I call it actually a B defense, even though you're not looking at B. You're close enough to B that you can get in there, but you're also real close and got direct sight lines on A. So if they're coming in there, then uh, you should be able to nail them. And if your opponents or your teammates fall at B, you know to turn around and you know haul ass back there. But as long as someone's alive back there, I don't worry about it. And usually, I don't worry about it even if they do die there, because you know unless you know that they're the last ones left. I wouldn't bother going hunting after them. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. For more strategies and tactics on Modern Warfare 2, visit nextgentactics.com.